Pam and I, Ed and Karen Thompson and Bob Lidecker, would like to welcome everybody today. You're all here because of your very special relationships with Matt, with Matt and Liz. Two very, very extraordinary people who share very, very special creative talents and creative characteristics of compassion and caring, creativity and great senses of humor. You know, as a dad, I see Liz as a sophisticated young woman who has found her soulmate, married him today, and that makes this day just perfect. But as a dad, I also see Liz as Lizzie. She was the little girl I walked to school every day. And as I approached Mrs. Dempsey's classroom, my leg would start to drag, and I'd knock on Mrs. Dempsey's door, and Mrs. Dempsey would open it, and she'd say, hi, Mr. Heiza. I'd say, hi, Mrs. Dempsey. And she'd look at me, and she'd say, it's time, and I'd say, I know. <laughs> Together, we'd peel Lizzie off my leg. I'd dart out that classroom. And again, Lizzie today is this sophisticated young woman who has married her Prince Charming, and together they have this new blank canvas that they are starting their lives together. And we wish to really thank each and every one of you for sharing this moment, for being those initial brush strokes that they have that they're painting together on this new canvas of their lives. Thank you very much. Sorry, everyone, I'm gonna have to uh to do a little reading, mostly because I feel like uh, this is pretty important to do it extremely well because my brother, you know, when he gave me my, uh, my speech, it was pretty ridiculous. Uh, as my brother normally does, it was, in my words, considered to be the best, uh, best man speech I've, I've read and, or heard uh, going to any wedding. So. I want to first start off by thanking everyone who made this special day possible, especially for all of you who have flown uh, from all over the country to witness my brother and Liz begin the rest of their lives together. So before I start, please join me in a toast. Here's to the beautiful bride and groom, to their future, a lifetime full of happiness, and to our fortune of being able to celebrate with them on this wonderful event tonight. Cheers. I am uh, especially glad to be here on this occasion to stand up for my brother and celebrate this incredible day with him and his bride. Some of you may know my brother and I are Irish twins. For those of you who don't know what Irish twins are, it's when siblings are born 12 months apart. In Matt and I's case, we're a measly 10 months apart. And as you can imagine, the age difference made our relationship a bit different than most brothers. I would always strive to be the older brother, trying to make sure Matt knew his place as the younger one. Matt didn't pay too much attention to the 10-month seniority I had over him, considering we were the exact age almost three months a year. My mom, however, seemed to have no idea that we were not actually identical twins <laughs> and decided we must never leave the house without matching head to toe. While we may have been dressed the same and looked the same as children, growing up, we could not have been more different. Matt was always the creative one, the one who knew what was cutting edge, hip, in, or as Lidecker say, the best. As a semi-rebellious teenager, he was a computer genius behind the best fake IDs in all of Rhode Island. Holograms included. A few years later, when he went to college, he continued to amaze everyone around him with his creativity and the magic he could make with his computer. 
They were no different after he graduated. His talent, undeniable, and eventually led him to LA, where he would continue to achieve amazing things, far exceeding anyone's expectation, and impress us all once again. He always strived to do the best in every project he worked on. Big or small, he put his heart and soul into everything he does. And if you know my brother, that goes far beyond just his work. Matt is without a doubt one of the most compassionate, loving, sensitive family men you will ever meet. I've always admired these qualities in him. And although it might sound a bit backwards to me being the older one, I have always looked up to him. And no, not just because he's six foot four. And I'm 5'10", I have no idea how that happened, none. He strives to be the best son, the best brother, the best uncle, and in the next phase of his life, he will undoubtedly be the best husband he can be. Which brings me to Liz. It was no surprise to any of us when he finally introduced us to Liz. Like everything he has accomplished in his life, he found you, the best. As I've been thinking about all the memories with Matt throughout my life, I realized he never really talked about girls. <laughs> Seriously. It was just something he never spoke of. As his passion was always his family, work, and not so much women, that all changed <laughs> when Liz came into the picture. I will never forget the first time he told us about her. He told us about this incredibly beautiful, smart, driven young woman. He was head over heels instantly. And not to sound cheesy, but I really believe that he knew you were the one the day he met you. Therefore, while on Matt's bachelor party in Vegas last month, <laughs> all of us guys came up with, for a little nickname for you, Liz. Liz the Lion Tamer. Liz, I cannot even begin to express to you how excited and thrilled we are to officially call you family. But more important than that, I can't even tell you how thankful I am for you. I am so grateful to know that you love Matt as much as I do. To know that he is in the best hands he could be in. I know you will always take care of him, support him, and love him through thick and thin. The same way I know he will always do that for you. You couldn't have chosen a better man Thank you, Lion Tamer, <laughs> for taming our lion. To Matt and Liz, here's to a lifetime of happiness. I love you guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Kelly. I'm Lizzie's older sister. And I know we want to get on with the night, so I'll make my comments brief. Um, Lizzie and I grew up, like a lot of siblings, pretty normal relationship. We were great friends growing up. But we, uh, we do have a little bit of a unique twist to our relationship. When I was a young adult, um, I realized that although a lot of people grew up saying they want to be just like their big brothers or their big sisters, I wanted to be just like my little sister, Lizzie. I was in college and I realized that this little girl had blossomed into this amazing woman that I was just so proud of. And now, especially that I'm a mom with Kayla, <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> as you've all met and seen, <laughs> and Ryan, I really hope that my kids have a little bit of Lizzie in them. She's 
she's he's around. She's she's just an outstanding person, and there's just so many traits that I admire and that I want my kids to have in them as well. Lizzie is thoughtful, and not just in the open doors for people sort of way, but she's really thoughtful. When she was seven, she was playing on our neighbor's swing set, and she took a fall. And she took a bad fall, uh, bad enough that 911 had to be called. And the EMTs got there, and they loaded her in the ambulance, and my mom climbed in the back with her. And in her pain, Lizzie said, no, mom, I want Kelly to ride with me. Because when I was 10 at the time, it was my dream to be on the show Rescue 911. <laughs> And Lizzie knew that I was dying to be in an ambulance. So as she lay there, hurt and in pain, I was thrilled as I turned on every light and every siren as we zoomed down Main Street Manchester. And I loved it. And only once did they have to pull over to tell my dad that after the fourth red light that he ran through, he could not follow the ambulance, although they were going to the same place. He still had to obey the traffic laws. Um, he made it there. We all made it there. Lizzie was just fine. But her thoughtfulness just blows me away. Lizzie is also very caring and compassionate. Um, as an eight-year-old, she found out that Farmer Lentai down the street had a calf. The calf was going to be sold. There's only one, one option for this calf. And she couldn't stand the thought of that calf being slaughtered. So she and a friend made posters. They walked down the street and they picketed for hours. Hours. They yelled. They had their signs. Unfortunately, the road was not a traveled one. And about three cars drove by to witness the protesters. Um, and Lizzie then became a strict vegetarian for years and would cry every time I made a moo or an oink noise at the table. So she's caring. Lizzie has amazing fashion sense, as you all know her now. Yet some of you knew her back when. Back when sweatpants was the only thing she wore to school every day. And I had to have a talk with her the night before she started middle school to say, look, that's not going to cut it. You cannot wear sweatpants anymore. She was horrified, immediately called Andrew and said, look, we cannot wear sweatpants in middle school. He also had to put his sweatpants away from his school wardrobe. And look at her now. She's amazing. She's beautiful. I still have college friends who will call and say, Cal, I'm going on a trip. I need to know what to wear. Please call Lizzie. Find out, find out what I should bring with me. So I hope for Kayla's sake, which I, I feel like she has it already, some of Lizzie's fashion sense. Lizzie is creative, as you heard my dad say. Um, if you look around this evening, Every detail was created by Liz. The table numbers, your place cards, typed, hand typed. Amazing. And in high school, it was painting and pottery. Lizzie took a pottery class. She loved her pottery class. She would go before school, after school, study halls. She fired up more vases and bowls than anyone probably in the history of the class. So much so that halfway through the year, she was told she could no longer make a bowl or a pot without my dad writing a check to the high school, <laughs> as she had blown through the allotted student account for the class for the year. So he did write a check. The next time you're at my mom's house, make note of the 27 bowls around. Those are all created by Lizzie. And Lizzie has amazing drive. She excels at everything she does. So proud of her. In high school, she was the president of her class, the vice president of the student council, the president of the student council. She's an amazing swimmer. She set records, went to states. In college, she got this awesome job as the supervisor of this multi-million dollar facility. Who gets that kind of job in college? <coughs> she moves to LA. She gets a temp job. Chemical effects. Falls in love. That is what she wants to do. She works hard. She learns the business. Now she's a producer there. I could not be prouder of Liz. And it was at Chemical Effects that she met Matt and fell in love with her Matt. And for those of you who don't know, I'm also married to a Matt. 
It was a slight controversy when we found out that Lizzie was going to be with Matt. What were we going to call him? We already had Matt. Clearly, little Matt, not going to work. There was no old young Matt because they're the same age. We tossed around number two, uh, junior varsity. My family did not like that. So to my family, he's just been Matt. And my Matt's just been Matt. Um, but I'm thrilled to say now that I have a name for you, Matt, and that's my brother. Matt, you're amazing. I could not be more happy for you both. You're witty and charming and funny and smart. You're the perfect compliment to my sister, and I couldn't be happier for you both. So, cheers to my sister, Liz, who I admire so much, and to her wonderful husband, my brother, Matt. <laughs>